I am in Morrison, Colorado at Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater. Uh, tonight I am actually seeing a performance here of John Williams music, so that's going to be really cool. But uh, first I want to explore this historic and very cool park, so let's check it out. We're going to start off at the historic Red Rocks Trading Post. This classic Pueblo Revival style trading post was built in 1931. Back in the day, it was known as the Indian Concession House or as the Red Rocks Pueblo. The place sold the usual trading post staples, but it also had a natural history museum. While they don't have that anymore, it is home to a different type of museum now. The inside still has its vigas and stained glass. Overall, it doesn't look like it's changed too much over the years. The exhibits of the Colorado Music Hall of Fame were fairly recently placed in this building, so let's take a look around. One of the earliest inductees is Elizabeth Spencer, who was the most prolific vocalist of Thomas Edison's staff for recording on his wax cylinders in the early 1900s. Billy Murray was apparently the first singer to ever become a star solely for singing on recordings. Here are some weird heads of Paul Whiteman who is widely known as the King of Jazz in the late 20s. I'm happy to see Glenn Miller inducted. I guess he grew up for a time in Colorado and worked in Denver as a young man. Of course, he went on to be perhaps the greatest big band leader. He produced some absolute bangers and sadly perished during World War II. Red Rocks Park was developed by the Civilian Conservation Corps program of the New Deal during the Great Depression. Denver did have a mass of unemployed young men, so the Corps provided work for them, and so Red Rocks Park became one of the CCC's largest projects. Here's an old menu from the Red Rocks Pueblo restaurant that used to be here. These placards tell about early rock and roll promoter Barry Fay and folk musician Harry Tuft. There was a 1960s band called The Astronauts, who originally played at the University of Colorado in Boulder, then became somewhat of a rival to the Beach Boys. This display is about the KIMN radio station, one of the most popular stations in Denver during the 50s and 60s. Sugarloaf was a local band during the late 60s. They had a national hit called Green Eyed Lady. This guitar was used by the band Flash Cadillac. They were another local group that became fairly well known in the 70s. Those are some glasses of Chuck Morris, a manager and artist from Colorado who worked with many of these Colorado grown bands. Here's a display about Dan Fogelberg, who was originally from the Midwest, but came to settle on a ranch near Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Fogelberg often recorded at the Caribou Ranch Recording Studio near Nederland, Colorado. And I think all of this equipment is from the Caribou Ranch. That's pretty cool. I read that John Lennon, Michael Jackson, and many others recorded there at one point or another. This dress was worn by Patsy Decline. I guess a character parody trope of Patsy Cline by Lanny Garrett. Here's a display about Stephen Stills of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Stills lived here in Colorado and did his own thing for much of the 70s with a new band called Manassas. There are even more inductees here, including folk singer Judy Collins. This dress was worn by Judy Collins on stage in the early 70s. Here's an original fireplace in the historic trading post. The architecture is great in here. I'm glad they kept it mostly intact. This placard is about Max Morath a ragtime player and big promoter of the genre well into the 20th century. It is appropriate that here in the Colorado Music Hall of Fame, there is a whole room dedicated to John Denver. Although not originally from Colorado, or originally having the last name Denver, he came to love this great state and lived in Aspen for much of his later life before his tragic plane crash death in 1997. Denver became one of the most famous songwriters and folk musicians of the 1970s. He had numerous hits that are still beloved today, especially Take Me Home, Country Roads. That golden jacket was worn by John Denver on his 1978 tour, and the blue denim jacket was worn on stage at some point. 
These are handwritten lyrics for Calypso from John Denver's personal notebook. And this is actually one of John Denver's guitars. It was a custom-made Gibson, alongside two of his stylish belts. This display is about his work with the Muppets. There was a 1979 film called John Denver and the Muppets, A Christmas Together. And here's a little replica of a big John Denver statue here at Red Rocks. So the Colorado Music Hall of Fame inside the historic trading post is a really great feature and is especially a great location due to the musical history and significance of Red Rocks. But now it is time to explore the rest of the park. Behind the Red Rocks trading post is one of the most iconic views in the park. A fantastic vista of the Red Rocks themselves. That is spectacular. At this overlook, there is some interesting Civilian Conservation Corps railing, which has some really cool stonework. They don't build them like this anymore. This is the John Denver statue right by the trading post. That is an awesome sculpture. It is titled Spirit, also known as the John Denver Earth Hero statue. Denver is posed majestically with his guitar strung across his back, standing on a rock with a giant eagle landed on his hand. This sculpture used to be located at the Windstar Foundation, a sizable conservation center in Snowmass, Colorado, that was founded by John Denver, but it closed down in 2012, and the property was sold, so the statue ended up here at Red Rocks, a perfect location for it. Of course, John Denver was a big environmentalist, and he was particularly familiar with birds of prey, so that's really neat. Now I am going to explore the Red Rocks themselves by taking the Trading Post Trail, probably the most popular and convenient trail in the park. It's about a 1.4 mile loop, and goes right past some of the most significant giant red rocks. That walkway leads up into the amphitheater, which is hidden behind that red rock. I'll go up there after this trail is completed. Clearly, Red Rocks Park is a very unique place. There are a few locations somewhat similar to it here in Colorado, and only a few others in the rest of the world. The Red Rocks are sandstone outcrops, basically some small hogbacks. Some of these features form as full-size ridges, like the nearby Dinosaur Ridge, which I have a separate video on. That also means during the Jurassic and Cretaceous eras, there were lots of dinosaurs around here. These rocks formed about 290 million years ago, when the ancestral Rocky Mountains were in their early stages. The rock here eroded significantly, then some geologic uplift caused the tilted angle of these rocks. This place has been an attraction for some time, often visited by folks in Denver for over a century. In the late 19th century, this was known as the Garden of the Angels, and during the 1870s, the owner of this park first turned it into a park. He made the first trails, 
picnic areas, and even add some ladders to climb up the rocks. A later owner in the early 1900s, J.B. Walker, renamed the park to the Garden of the Titans. After the Great Depression hit, the city of Denver wanted to use its New Deal funding to create infrastructure at local parks, especially some of the more interesting geologic locations, so the Red Rocks was an obvious choice. Utilizing the surplus of labor available, a big Civilian Conservation Corps camp was established nearby, known as Mount Morrison. Apparently it is still standing, and it's probably the best preserved Civilian Conservation Corps camp, but I didn't have time to go find it. They built the roads into and through the park. They also built the training post we visited. They improved the trails, and built the amphitheater. That was definitely the masterpiece of it all. Because of this Civilian Conservation Corps heritage, Red Rocks Park is a National Historic Landmark. Wow, this place is awesome. This is probably one of the coolest trails I have ever done. Pretty much all of these formations are named, and many have been renamed over time. I mentioned that in the early 1900s, this park was called the Garden of the Titans, and many of the features were named after Greek gods.
I stumbled across this. If you know what this is, leave a comment. Well, the Trading Post Trail is fantastic. The scenery is nothing but magnificent throughout the entire trail. It is a very easy path. Pretty much anyone could probably handle this, so definitely try to do it if you visit. Now I am going to head up to the world famous Red Rocks Amphitheater. There is this long walkway ramp up the side of a gargantuan red rock to get up to the amphitheater. The view over Red Rocks Park and the surrounding area is incredible way up here on this ramp. Actually over there is the Denver skyline. The amphitheater is open to explore during the day when there are no concerts or events going on, but I will be returning for one in the evening. And this is the Red Rocks Amphitheater, one of the most unique and incredible open-air amphitheaters in the world. You can see that the seating and stage is built into and in between colossal Red Rock outcrops. That is just amazing and ingenious. This location has been used for musical performances for over a century. Apparently a small amphitheater was built in here during the early 1900s. However, this massive amphitheater began construction in 1936. It was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, definitely one of the best and most important projects they completed during the Great Depression. It finally opened in June of 1941, so it's in its 80th year now.
The place is massive. There's seating for about 9,500 people, and there are apparently some very unique acoustics. I'm now at the top of the amphitheater, at an elevation of about 6,500 feet. The stage is at 6,400 feet. There's a great overview of the amphitheater up here. The Denver skyline is also visible up here. There's a Red Rocks Visitor Center at the top, so let's take a look in there. Here's a plaque commemorating the Civilian Conservation Corps. Looks like there's a few fossils on display. Here's a model of the amphitheater to appreciate the sheer magnitude of this place. On the lower level, there is a museum about Red Rocks Park. Here's some more information on this incredible Civilian Conservation Corps achievement. And this is the Red Rocks Performers Hall of Fame. There are some displays about the long list of musicians and bands who have performed at the Red Rocks Amphitheater. Stevie Nicks and James Taylor have performed here, as well as Tom Petty. Everyone from Jimi Hendrix to U2 to the Grateful Dead have played here. There are lots of posters for performances here. The unique setting does allow for some interesting posters. The Beatles did one of their most famous concerts here at Red Rocks on August 26, 1964, although surprisingly they didn't sell out here. There's a guitar autographed by James Taylor, opera singer Lily Pons, Willie Nelson, and the Allman Brothers Band have all played here. John Denver was quite familiar with Red Rocks. He played and recorded concerts here many times. Here's a map of the United States made out of vinyl records. Here are some sketches for the amphitheater. They even have a big old taxidermy grizzly bear in here. And this is a compilation of posters for Red Rocks concerts. This was really cool to finally see the Red Rocks Amphitheater. I've been hearing about it all my life, but I'm going to come back up here a little later in the day for a concert. It is now later in the day, so it's time for the Music of John Williams concert here at Red Rocks. I've got a good feeling about this. Now John Williams is not actually here, but the Colorado Symphony Orchestra will be playing some of his masterpieces. Guess they're currently doing some walk-up COVID vaccinations up here. It is May 23rd, 2021 as of the recording of this video, so this is one of the first concerts at the Red Rocks Amphitheater for the season. And this is the first large gathering like this I have gone to since the outbreak of the pandemic. I guess they did some socially distanced concerts here in the early summer of 2020, but then they had to stop. For this concert, they still have some social distancing measures. As it turned out, in 2021, Red Rocks was actually the top grossing and most attended concert venue in the world. So 
So I have a separate video featuring over 20 minutes of excerpts from this concert. However, here are a few highlights. The music of John Williams' concert here at the Red Rocks Amphitheater was probably one of the best experiences of my life. The acoustics are indeed amazing. The scenery and experience of this evening here was one of a kind. This will definitely be a favorite memory of mine for a long time. Again, if you'd like to see more of this concert, I did film some more, and that is featured in a separate video that is linked in the description. The amphitheater in the Red Rocks is beautiful all lit up. It sure was incredible listening to the music as the sun set over the Red Rocks and Denver, Colorado, and a bright full moon rising was also majestic. So that was the Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater, a wonderful one-of-a-kind place that was fantastic to visit and explore. If you enjoyed the video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I have filmed many other videos on all sorts of interesting and unique places across Colorado and the United States, including other natural wonders and national parks, along with roadside attractions, museums, historic sites, theme parks, and more. Thanks for watching.